Welcome in to Winging It Wednesday on Acadiana's Morning News. So happy to be back. I missed all the fun last week. Nah, where you went? Gosh, what was last? Oh, it was my birthday last week. Oh, so yeah. I, I did like every happy birthday. well-meaning adult oh. does and took the day off on my birthday. Good for you. <laughs> we need to get the paddle out and spank you for your yes. birthday. Well, again, a little bit too early. <laughs> a little bit too early Bernie, for said, Bernie says she already has. Uh, see, there you go. Um, okay, so I, I know uh, maybe some of you who listen to this show always wondered what Stafford's smoking, but he does smoke meat, and he uh, he has brought in some smoked salmon today. He brought in some smoked cheddar last week. Yeah. Um, we had a guest in who actually ate a piece of, of Stafford's mm-hmm. smoked cheese mm-hmm. and said, she gets it tastes like cheese in my, it, it feels like cheese in my <laughs> mouth, but it tastes like brisket. Wow. So, works for me. Good stuff, good stuff. Brisket cheese. Brisket cheese. The new market. Yes. I told you. I've already told you, but whatever. All right, guys. So uh, <laughs> so first on our, on our list today, uh, you know, we, we send out these topic lists, and you know what? It's usually just uh, an invitation to the universe to make something else happen and for there to be a huge curveball. Well, yesterday exactly. afternoon, we had the uh, attack that happened in New York. A uh, dozen people injured, eight people killed, 29-year-old suspect in custody, Warren, uh, we'll start with you on this one. Um, look, have we made advancements? Look, the the New York Police Department is probably the best trained in, in terms of terror, and this is where it happened, and it seemed like a pretty quick response. Well, you know, I, how can you not be a quick response whenever somebody drives a truck into a group of bicycles on the sidewalk? And uh, I think the first response was from a civilian driving a bus, wasn't it? And... Uh, you know, one of the things I want to say is, is that, first of all, I think they were all fairly quick to point out that this was actually an act of terrorism and not necessarily just some deranged person that was workplace violence or sidewalk violence, or whatever you want to call it. At least they called it like it was. And what do we have here? We have a nice gentleman who came over here uh, legally from Uzbekistan and uh and the uh, president of Uzbekistan, I understand, has uh, offered their full assistance in investigations and whatever into this deal. Let's look a little bit about, you know, where Uzbekistan is and what's surrounding it and what are the people like there. And, um, and it may give us a little bit of a hint as to what you may want to look for in these people. You know, that uh, I go back to what our president, uh, George W. Bush, told Vladimir Putin when he was talking about the Chechnyans down there, that, you know, you need to negotiate with them. And uh, Putin told him, said, well, uh, why don't you negotiate with the bastards? Call bin Laden to the White House and have coffee with him, and you all talk over your differences. And so, you know, that you really got to be careful when you got these people coming in there. And um, whether he was radicalized when he got here or not, I would say he was probably radicalized a long, long time ago. All right, Carol, it is your turn. What do you think? Well, the, several of the attacks in Europe's, uh, Europe have uh, were by Uzbeks, and so um, and this one, you know, they're being radicalized. Uh, these are individuals being radicalized, but the, the problem is this guy came in through that diversity visa program, which, by the way, was authored by Chuck Schumer, who is now screaming and yelling about you know terrorists, et cetera, in his neighborhood. But he's the one who authored that. They come in on a lottery. There's no real background check on these people. They come in on a lottery system. But apparently the guy did go through a background check um, when he was hired by Uber. And they're cooperating now with the feds. It's really hard to stop these uh, individual actors um, that that have been radicalized. So he had a commercial driver's license, too, from what I understand. He was a truck driver, certified truck driver so i really commend i was it, it was happening while my show was on yesterday and i really commend the uh, new york city police department is one of the best if not the best in a, a municipal setting in dealing with terrorism and they were absolutely right on it the question was that several of the callers had to the show is how did a guy go for about 10 to 20 blocks that depending on how many because some people say he got off at one point and got back on so you're not really sure how far down the bike path that he went and without being apprehended. And um, that's going to be a question they're going to have to answer. They have cameras all over New York City, so they should be able to get all the answers they need all rather right. quickly. Very good. Stafford, your turn. Uh, my thoughts go out to the families of the, of the victims. Um, I think that five of the people that died were, uh, were tourists, Argentinians, 
uh, who are here visiting and celebrating their, I think, 30th year of graduating from college together. Um, and hats off to the New York Police Department for doing a good job of catching this guy alive. I'm glad to see that that uh, we can put you know, fundamentalism on, on trial. Um, I've said this for a long time. I believe that any form of fundamentalism is, is dangerous. Uh, and it allows... Uh, Unchecked fundamentalism allows people to become radicalized. So whether it's uh, it's religion or, or politics or, or whatever it is, uh, fundamental, fundamentalism is bad. I <clears throat> I know that the people of New York have a very strong resolve, and they've been through a lot, and they'll continue to live their lives um, peacefully. And I hope that they find a way to... to to have peace with themselves. And I hope that the New York City police departments get stronger and they're better at stopping this kind of stuff. And, and I think that if they weren't as strong as they were, we'd have had more deaths. Very good job, everybody. Thank you very much on that. We will go to Rob. Question two, you ready? The Mueller Russia probe. Yes, uh, that is still going on. We're expecting uh, more information, more uh, indictments possibly. Let's take a stab at this one in this segment, then we'll come back. Sounds good to All me. All right, so let's start. Get ready, panelists. Let's start. Are we ready? Carol gets to go first. All right, mm. Carol, go ahead Yay. first. Hey, what can I say? They're, they're probing the wrong issues in this one. Uh, now, Manafort, they got him on, what, money laundering, which can be a misdemeanor or a felony. I didn't even get him on um, any of the other uh, counts, as far as I know. I haven't read the whole indictment, but it doesn't seem to be, I was, uh, you know, Listening to um, Levine, Mark Levine, and uh, he didn't seem to think it was as strong as if this is the low hanging fruit that Mueller is going through for. It's it's not really convincing. Um, the real problem here goes back to Mueller's involvement in the Uranium One deal. And he was involved and the Justice Department was involved. Eric Holder sat on the Committee for Foreign Investments along with Hillary Clinton that approved the Uranium One deal. So in my opinion, they're probing the wrong Russia collusion. There has been nothing verified about the Trump administration colluding with Russia. The charges against Manafort came, what, before 2014, before his ever involvement in the Trump campaign. So this is going to be interesting to see how what Mueller does to save face because he's in it up to his eyeballs. He was FBI director. They made that man who just got his nondisclosure agreement. He's the one who made him sign the nondisclosure agreement. It was a businessman who was planted and was doing the dirty deals. It was bribery, kickbacks, everything else you can imagine. Holder knew about it. Holder participated in it. Mueller knew about it, possibly participated in it. I don't see any clean hands around in there in Washington. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out when all the information comes out. And I've gotten a new report from The Hill, and I'll be using it this afternoon on my show. All right, Stafford, you are next, sir. So there's a couple of things that were incorrect about that. First off, he was mon- laundering money until 2016. So uh, last week... Not War- as part of the Trump uh, la- administration. Last week, last week, Warren... And nobody... He's not charged with laundering money for the Trump administration, okay? So last week, a couple of things were said. A... Warren said that uh, that Mueller's investigation was put inside lanes that allowed him to only go after uh, collusion with Russians on the Trump investigation. The charges brought against Manafort have shown that that is absolutely incorrect, right? So he hasn't been charged with colluding with the Russians. He's been charged with laundering money and various other offenses, failure to register as a foreign agent. Um, we've heard... Carroll and a lot of the Republican media say that the Russian investigation was nothing, that nothing would come of it, and it was all a ruse. Well, now that we've seen the arrest of George Papadopoulos, we know that that is also incorrect. At 8.30 last night, reports came out that George Papadopoulos has confirmed that higher-ups in the Trump administration were in the communications via email with George Papadopoulos and his intent to get involved with the Russians. I've said repeatedly that time will tell what's going to happen with this investigation. And time and time is starting to tell what's going on with this investigation. If, and this is a big if, if Hillary Clinton colluded with the Russians, convene a grand jury and prosecutor. Mueller has the ability to do that. And let's be clear, Mueller would not be in the position that he's in if Trump w- Trump's ego wouldn't have made him fire Comey. Okay, Mueller was put. He's a Republican put into place by Republicans who's fishing this stuff out. So I, somebody made a good point. Monday was Manafort Monday, right? And I think we're going to have a lot more of those coming up. George Papadopoulos is 
has not been he has not been gone in front of a grand jury. The evidence has not been brought in front of a grand jury. It's been brought. He's held on a special charge that says that his situation is being litigated. So he is basically singing right now, right? And what you're going to hear people say is that he was a volunteer. Well, guess what? They were all volunteers. None of them got paid. So we had three campaign officials of the Trump administration who are now probably going to go to jail. Warren, your turn, sir. Yes, there's some very good points brought out by both of these two fine panelists. What I would like to add to that is that uh, perhaps whether it was intended or not, Mr. Mueller, I think, just opened Pandora's box. And uh, so Papadopoulos has been arrested or going to be for lying. Manafort, one of the things that, that in the indictment was lying. Another thing in the indictment was laundering money. Another thing was trying to conceal assets and on and on and on. When I, when now we started indicting people for lying. Let's go back and let's listen to the, to the dialogue between Trey Gowdy and, and Director Comey. Director Comey, mm-hmm. when she said that she, there was no classified material on her server, was that a truth answer? No. When she said that she only used one device to uh, communicate with whenever she was Secretary of State, was that the truth? No. There were several devices. Director Comey, whenever this happened, blah, 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 was that the truth? No, it was not the truth. And on and on and on. FBI, when Clinton met with uh, Loretta Lynch on the tarmac in, in Arizona, was there anything there to discuss about the uh, Hillary Clinton and her emails and what role the FBI? No, there's the FBI. Do you have any records of that? No, we do not. Oh, do you have this, that, no? No, we do not. And then we turn around and find out the FBI had 36 pages of, of records on that about what they had agreed to. We find out that Loretta Lynch then turned around and got Comey, told Comey, said, this is what you need to do to clear Hillary Clinton. You're going to take the, take the place of the prosecutor, not us. It Was that the truth? So let's investigate and indict the damn liars. We're going to talk about Trump's agenda next, and what does this all mean (laughs) for getting things done there? It's 718 on Winging It Wednesday. (laughs) 720 now on Acadiana's Morning News. So what does all of this mean for Trump's agenda? Tax reform. Um, Even, I guess, in the periphery, health care as well. Um, Lots of advancements made in, in many of these areas. And can Republicans actually continue... Uh, to support Trump, even with all of these, and help to push these issues forward. Stafford's going to start first on this one. What say you about agenda action items? Uh, current estimates of what uh, is being proposed, which we don't have all the details yet, is that it'll add five and a half trillion dollars to the deficit. Uh, current rules in the House say that um, any tax reform can't add more than one point two trillion dollars to the deficit. So they're looking at places to increase revenue, um, which is kind of code sign for taxing the middle class, right? So uh, they're looking at getting potentially getting rid of the mortgage uh, interest deduction, uh, decreasing the amount of money that you can put into your 401k. Um, and that's the reason that at these press conferences, uh, you're seeing these questions about child tax credits and everything else. So... Um, and then when you get to the Senate, uh, we've got Bob Corker and Rand Paul who've said that they are not going to support it if it adds any money to the deficit. So I'd be interested to see um, if it makes it out of committee. I don't, I, I've said for two weeks now, I'd be surprised if it did. I don't think it will. Um, and again, this is, we, we, have a, we have a leadership problem. Um, we don't have people who can sit down across at the table and say, hey, Instead of getting 51 Republicans or 52 Republicans, 48 Democrats, why don't we get 60 with half and half and let the fundamentalists of both parties play by themselves? Um, I think it's it's kind of universally agreed that something probably needs to be done about taxes, right? Uh, but let's find something that works for everybody. The getting rid of the death tax only affects two out of every 1,000 people. And it's a 10% tax for the most part on anything handed down to your kids over $5 million. I hope I'm in a position where when I pass away, I have that problem. But let's be clear about this. Getting rid of it is only giving money to the rich. And and to make up that revenue, it's going to be on the back of the backs of the middle class. All right, Warren. How many Democrats uh, voted against getting rid of the death tax and George W. Bush was in there? I don't think there was any. That uh, Look, 
you know, a lot of what he said I agree with, you know, but look, adding Thank to the you. deficit, adding to the deficit, you know what, you know what's going to add to the deficit is the low economy, is a slow economy. What's going to keep the deficit from going up? The deficit is set to double every eight years. That's an automatic spending increase that was put in back in the 60s by the Democrats. The Democrats and the leftists have controlled Congress and controlled the White House for 70 years, with the exception of just a couple of years in the, here in the last 20 years or so. You started doubling the debt. It took 25 years to double the debt from 1950 to 1975. Once they put that thing in in like 67 or 68, it has doubled every eight years, regardless of who was in the White House, except for one time, because Congress does the budget, not the president. When Newt Gingrich then took over Congress in 1994 and Bill Clinton became a quasi-Republican, we had the first surplus outside of using tax increases for it. We had the first surplus ever, and we were paying down the debt until the leftists got elected there in 2000 and, and uh, decided that he needed to try to out-Democrat the Democrats, and they did a really good job of it. You know, all of these, these doom and gloom things that come out of the House that you love to point to, what the government's saying and all that, it's all smoke and mirrors and lies. Go back to Reagan. What happened when they did that with Reagan? And they were all talking about this is going to be the end of the world. <laughs> the money coming into Washington more than doubled. All right. Carol, you are next. Well, they ne- the Democrats never factor in a growth and dynamic scoring and that sort of thing. So the Democrats put the worst spin on it. The Republicans put the best spin on it. The truth is lies, I would imagine, somewhere in between. And we don't really know. We know the outlines, what the president would like to see achieved. But the, the real bills are going to be written in the House. And that's going to be Speaker Ryan's uh, real job to get that done. But I can remember when Speaker Ryan first ran for the House of Representatives, I was very impressed. His roadmap for America, he was one of the first ones to come out years ago with a, a comprehensive fiscal outline for how to get the country back on track. This is his bread and butter. This is what he does. It's what he's done his whole entire career. If he cannot whip that house into shape. Now, Kevin McCarthy's been going out. So has Steve Scalise. In spite of his injury, Steve Scalise is back at it trying to whip the votes up for this. They need to get those votes and they need to get this out of committee, out of the House and uh, and get it moving. Because really, there's there's a lot of activity going on now, a lot of business activity, unemployment, you know, down a lot of uh, stock market activity, et cetera, on the hope of significant tax reform. If those hopes are dashed, it's really going to put a dent in the ability of this country to move forward. I really believe that. I think it will be a real blow uh, to the psyche of the country and to the psyche of the business people who want to invest, who are ready to invest and create new jobs and new businesses. And they're just waiting to see some positive movement from Washington. All right. We'll bring the conversation back local. Coming up on the show with LCG and survivor benefits for fallen officers and officers' families. It's 726 now, Winging It Wednesday, brought to you each and every week by Service Cadillac at 1212 and 1214 Ambassador Caffrey, where the wash is located. Yeah, and that's true. So you go and get your car wash and then go and look at something. Is your, uh, have you, have you sold this latest uh, Cadillac yet? (laughs) Can I still buy your car? I can still buy my car. So I can go Escalade it today if I want. Do you know what you're going to get this week? Well, no, the, the Escalade is it. Like, that's okay. what I've decided I'm uh-huh. going to just keep. Okay, so that's, but so you're not going to give it away. No, I see. I'm not going right. to give it away, but if mm-hmm. you want to see it, you can go to Service Cadillac. Go see my friends, Kevin. And Taylor. be like, where is Rob's car? Yeah. I want to look at it. They keep I want to test drive me. it. I want to be in that Escalade. Just I want to say, look good. some details on it. It okay. is a Cadillac Escalade yeah. Platinum what Edition, does it do? 2017. Yes. It's white on the outside. Okay. Uh, buttery brown. Buttery. I, I'm, sure it, I'm sure it <gasps> has an official brown. Cadillac name, but I call it Praline Brown. That's <laughs> what the seats are. Um, like, Sounds delicious. How about, yes, doesn't how about, it? <laughs> you know what everyone's favorite is? Praline Chicken. Praline Chicken mm. Brown. Oh, my goodness. Um, and it massages your back as good as any well, Masseuse? those chairs at uh, Brookstone. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. While you're driving, there's even an anti-fatigue See? that massages your backside. That is you're genius. You're kidding me. But I'm telling you, Let's just that's say the I, only, I can't drive longer than an hour and a half, two hours. I pretended My to be tired for the whole point. weekend to Ooh. turn it's, that thing that on. That is genius, man. Yeah. Genius. All right. So 1212 Ambassador, that's where you can find your, your buttery brown 
seats and all that good stuff. Praline, Praline chicken brown. Praline chicken brown. That stuff is so good. It is so good. Yeah. It's anyway, so bad I'm for scared. me. I'm uh, scared. Yeah. All right, it's 727 here. We're yeah. back with more with the panelists mm-hmm. next on the KDN this morning news. Okay. <laughs> all right, so yesterday, you know the way everything is it publicized these days. It doesn't usually come in the form of a press release. It's in a Facebook post. Facebook post yesterday uh, by LCG Lafayette Parish President, Mayor, Mayor President, Joel Robodeau, um, with, a, with a post that's titled, LCG presents facts relative to survivor benefits. A spouse can expect to receive $3.4 million. Here is how this comes up. This little section, and then we'll jump in uh, with our panelists. In total, a surviving spouse can expect to receive in excess of $3.4 million in benefits with LCG providing $2.7 million of that. Of this amount, the spouse would receive a $700,000 upfront lump sum and then monthly payments for the course of their lifetime. So the notion that families are left to fend for themselves is simply and utterly false. This from Mayor President Joel Robito. Warren, we'll start with you on this one. We've had this conversation before, but this sort of seems like a little bit of an afterthought. You know, I, um, I don't know. I don't know what they do for anybody else. That, that's my point. I, mean, I go back to what I said before. What about the people who work on the highway and they're out there wrecking barricades or whatever, putting up signs, trying to keep people from driving into floodwaters and all that, and they get killed in the line of duty? What do they get? Does the, the, the spouse get their full pay for the rest of their life and all of that? I don't know. I just know that, you know, we have these overreactions to some things. It's just like what did the people get who got killed in the towers of 9-11? What did their families actually wind up with? It was something like a million and a half dollars on average apiece. What did the soldiers' families get who, who get killed in Afghanistan or Iraq and any of these other no-win wars that we get into? Or if we die in a helicopter crash out here training? I don't know. But do they get paid the full salary for the rest of their life? I don't think so. Do they get a $750,000 lump sum payment? I don't think so. So, I mean, you know, it kind of comes down to that fact of whose life is worth more than somebody else's. And I know that the police, the firemen and all that, they do a great job. And that, uh, but, you know, when, it, when we look at it, we have to have some balance. And I still go back to the same old thing. Whose life is worth more than somebody else's? And who, and who comes up with these numbers? All right, Carol. Well, it's a just a, such a distasteful <clears throat> argument to be having uh, from a PR standpoint. This, this, oh man, Bernie was right. A lot, this could have been handled so, so much better. Um, at that hearing the other night, it almost sounded as though they were blaming, they were blaming the the widow, you know, for uh, you know hurting Lafayette's image or something. Some statement was made to that effect. It came out very, it came out the wrong way, I'm sure. Um, but at any rate. You know, don't blame the widow. And th- it's, this is a terrible situation. She, she, the family will be taken care of. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for any officer who, or, or firefighter or first responder who dies in the line of duty. Um, and it's a different thing than just a highway worker or something like that. I mean, that's a hazard of their job, whatever. But this is kind of like putting your life on the line for the community. So it does have a whole different connotation to it. Again, I think it could have been handled so much better if if, if they could have, you know, gone behind closed doors, put out, laid out all the information without jumping the gun on the whole. Excuse the terrible mm. metaphor, mm. but that. But uh, it would have been nice to see these things done in a in a more rational way than to fight this out in public. Nobody comes off looking great. You know, there are people sitting back hurting right now. As Warren said, you know, other other workers in government are saying, well, gee, she's she's going to do pretty well. She, she lost her husband and her kids lost their father. And so they're, you know, it's it's just a distasteful thing to see this argument played out this way. All right. Let's go to the phones at 232-1542. Always taking your input as we truly wing it here on Winging It Wednesday. Go ahead, call her with your comment. Yeah, my name's Dorian Brabham. I, um, uh... I do work for the city, and it's it's not that the fact that – is there a way to leave my name off? Oh, I'm sorry. When you call this show – we're going to stop right there. But when you call this show, this is live, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. You'll have to call back later after 8 o'clock. Um, he didn't say anything, though. Well, he he didn't say anything, anything Thankfully, 
Thankfully, you didn't give his sure, opinion. Sure, he was calling to say everyone is doing such a great job. Oh. And he's proud to be a... <laughs> All right, so okay. next up. Next up. Uh, go ahead, <laughs> Tyler, with your comment. And remember, you're on a live <laughs> show. Yeah, this is me. This, this is the same guy. Listen, um, I'm calling about the, the $2.2 million that they said LCG gets. LCG okay, wait. 2.7 right 2. 2. is, is 2. what they is said the LCG. Total? Okay. 2.7 out of 3.4 million. LCG doesn't write those checks. No. The, the, the retirement for the rest of their life is because he paid retirement contributions to Empers. It's right. not because he's an LCG employee. Right. So that's, that's a misconception. It's not that they write the check every month. Isn't there the also a, a state fund? That's it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. There's a state fund that they get. That's in the lump sum. It's two hundred fifty thousand uh-huh. dollars, which is a state survivor benefit, and there's a federal survivor benefit. Yeah. In federal, the lump sum, that's the one. That's not. Yeah. That's not paid by the LCG government every month. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the right. comment. That's, that's, an that's what he paid into you his know, retirement. And, and mm-hmm. I, yeah. And you know, I'm this all gonna... started because all she wanted, all she wanted, was for them to pay the insurance. Because all we had been talking about initially was health insurance. That, that's I mean, it. That, that's that was, it. Really that was the initial thing. It's, so, I'll say what I said in the beginning. I, first, I there's no amount of money that's going to bring her husband back, um, and I I hope that she finds peace because I can tell you, if I, I I don't know how my life would be if I lost my spouse, um, and I'm thankful for the police that put their their selves in harm's way every day for to make our community safe, right? Um, I think that there's been some some misconceptions about what's been said. From both sides, right? I think LCG has kind of said from the beginning, "Look, we got we got caught, right? We weren't prepared for this. We haven't had somebody get killed in the line of duty. I think I think it's close to fifty years, right? And so they, they're they're trying to figure out, hey, let's let's first they're self insured, right? So they got to figure out what they're going to do on their own end. So they, I think they've all sat down and said, hey, what can we do to make sure that she's taken care of? I think her attorney has been saying something very different. I think her attorney has done his job. And put pressure via social media on LCG to make sure that she's taken care of. I don't think the wife has has come out and said anything, right? I think that she's she's been a grieving mother and a grieving you know widow, right? So, and and I think the LCG has had to take a step back and say, hey, you know, we're going to be as open and honest as we can with all this. We're going to find out what the actual details are and put it together. Um, and look, you saw Youngsville come out. You know, a couple of weeks ago, and say, "Hey, this is what we do. This is what we're gonna do, right?" Which hats off to the mayor over there for realizing when it's a good opportunity to seize on the story. So, <clears throat> I can tell you, I hope that um, as a community, we continue to put the lives of our first responders and their families uh, up front, and we continue to allow the board and the mayor, who are doing a good job, um, who are doing the best that they can, I believe, uh, to take care of of our first responders. All right. Great topic. I don't think it's the end of this story. It seems like every few days we get a little bit uh, more on it. Uh, KPL News Time is 7.39. We're going to come back. It seems like Governor Edwards and Attorney General Jeff Landry are at it once again. This time it's over the opioid crisis. All right. If you're heading out today, bring the big umbrella because 70% of our area is going to get some shower activity today. A high temperature at 80 degrees. Cloudy tonight. Showers will decrease over the course of the evening. A low tonight at 70, then a 30% chance of rain for tomorrow with a high expected at 82. Our weather update brought to you by The Bank, one of Louisiana's top banks, offering a full range of financial services, convenient locations, and online anytime at thebank-online.com. The Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 7.43 uh, here. Thank you, Annie Lennox, for just easing us she into took Wednesday. took to the river. She took me to the proverbial river. She hey, dropped you in the water. FYI. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> Did you see the light, though? FYI, uh, the weather is going to get uh, pretty nasty for the rest of the week. So mm. hopefully you cut your grass yesterday. Oh. If not, you have an excuse for four more days like me. Yay. So oh. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to point that out? <laughs> Literally, we came home after being away for the weekend. And Sarah said, we really should have cut the grass before we left. And I said, well, it's going to be bad weather today. So we can't, hey, we I, can't cut it. I, I, listen, oh, I'm going to get in trouble me. for saying this. But I always ask my wife, what's this we thing? Well, <laughs> and she doesn't think that's, that's funny. I don't think that would be that funny, huh? Yeah, she's probably like, that's not funny. <laughs> so the AG and Governor Edwards are apparently back at it again. This time it's over the state's lawsuit over opioids. Um, interesting story yesterday on this and, and kind of 
who's the chief and who's the Indian. That's what it seems like in, in this situation. And maybe they are both chiefs, I guess we could say. Warren, we'll start with you on this one. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I think the opioid <laughs> deal, look, it, it comes down to this thing, you know, are we trying to attack a problem or are we trying to get money? And it always comes down, we want money. You know, if the opioid problem is that big of a problem, then by God, let's just pass laws that you can't produce the damn things. And if you and if you can't produce, or if you are going to produce them, then you got to totally regulate. You know how much they get dispensed and all of this, that, and other. What we're trying to do now is to say, okay, well, since all this has been going on, we now want seventy-seven billion dollars. You know, so what is that going to do to for, to diminish the, uh, the 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 effects of it? You know, when you go over to the black community, you know what they're saying. Is it why is it all at once? This is a big damn deal now because the opioids are the white people's problem. They're the ones popping the pills and getting all the prescriptions. You know they don't worry about crack cocaine. What they do is they just have this this law that says if you're smoking crack or you're selling crack, then you go to prison for this long period of time. But if you're pushing pills or you're taking pills and all that, then, well, then we need to have some programs that will take care of you. And, look, I kind of got to look at both sides of it and that it comes down to it. Well, in order to take care of this problem, we're going to sue. Because well, that's, that's Louisiana's uh, solution to everything, you know, sue, get some money. Edwin Edwards said one time that he said, I fell off my horse. He said it was my own horse. I saddled myself, riding him on my own property. <laughs> he was spooked by my own dog. And I fell off. I had to go to the hospital. And what makes me so mad? He said, "There's not one damn person I can sue." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, who's next, Carol? Well, you know, it's it's about both. It's about public health and it's about money. When you see the kind of money the CDC is handing out to the states, uh, and this this explains why Governor John Bell Edwards went to Washington when uh, the president was uh, signing, uh, was talking about opioid abuse, et cetera. Because so far, uh, Louisiana has gotten, well, quite a bit of money. Uh, the CDC sent us about 540000 uh, I don't know, a year or so ago. I don't know how long ago it was. And then they increased that to 457000 Uh There were reports in the paper that opioid deaths in Louisiana were underreported by about 84%. They just haven't had the kind of attention paid to the uh, opioid deaths. But uh, they're, they're beginning to see it uh, since they started counting they figure opioid deaths have about doubled since 2012 to 2016. So this is a this is an issue that needs to be gotten handled on. From a law enforcement standpoint, yeah, I think it goes to the attorney general. I think what the governor is looking at through HHS, Department of Health and Hospitals, and um, to see how this is going to be, not health and hospital, health and human services, how this is going to be handled in terms of public education. And one thing that I saw cited that was very good, I thought, uh, look at the number of uh, people who are smoking these days. Smoking has continually decreased because of a significant and really intense education program in the schools about smoking, telling those kids don't smoke, it's a, don't smoke, don't smoke. So they're saying that uh, some of that money should and could be used to do intensive education. So from that standpoint, it should go through DHS. But from the standpoint of law enforcement, I think it belongs with the Attorney General. All right, Stafford. All right, Stafford. Warren suggested ending opioid produ- production. And I'm going to tell you that the, the, the unfortunate thing about um, opioids is that they do work for pain management. Um, the problem is, is that as a society, as le- with elected representatives, we've uh, allowed the drug companies to go absolutely haywire with these things so we do need money right so carol said the cdc sent us i I think a close if the numbers were what you said were correct about a million dollars i think that that might put 50 people through rehab and certainly not a long-term rehab uh because rehab is very very expensive um opioids are heroin they're not uh a synthetic drug they are they are heroin uh, that are used to and, and every time we get a new version of st- stuff so it was you know it was Lortab now Oxycontin and Vicodin and everything else that, every other iteration that this has been they've said okay you know it's a time release and they've changed it and what's happened is we end up with these pain clinics and these doctors who will write you a prescription for anything um, I said it last week and I'll say it again I think it's very important that the state addresses uh, using marijuana for pain and we need to severely limit access to 
opioids. And the companies who are making the money off of this should be held liable for the 150 people that die a day from opioid addiction. What about the marijuana companies later on? Should they be held marijuana, accountable marijuana when you doesn't, smoke it? Marijuana doesn't kill anybody. Marijuana but, uh, will it, kill you from smoking it. Okay, and you can eat it as well. COPD. There, there are different ways that you can You're ingest right. it, right? But ask somebody, and by the way, like, which choice is there? So we have to regulate that, are, too. Don't smoke it. Take it in a pill form. Fine. There are doesn't synthetic opioids, by the way. There are. Synthetic yeah, there opioids. are synthetic synthetic impu- uh, opioids, but you're you're still like no matter what your drug is when it comes to opioids or cocaine or whatever, whatever else is on the street, it does the same thing in your brain, right? So you go up, then you go down, then you go up, then you go down, then you go up, then you go down. Okay, you're next, freak, because he's just <laughs> his arm's gonna fall off. He's waving he, so sometimes hard. Sometimes Warren flails around like there are eighty people in this room, Bernie, but there are just five. Many. Well, it's it pretty damn hard sometimes get your attention. Uh, <laughs> Bernie said I was driving in this morning. I was listening to it, and Bernie was talking about her affection for Mary Jane. Now, if those of you who are, <laughs> that would be Let's Mary Jane the well, peanut butter well, candy. Well, 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 all right. That all would right. be they make a weed peanut butter, butter candy. Okay, now look. I know, right? Okay, in Colorado. All right, now. Now look, I have been on record you. as saying this over the years, time yes. and time again. Yes. I am for legalizing every drug there is. I know why he I feels The consequences way. against them, the negative consequences are mm-hmm. already against the law. What I would like to see them do is take the money we're spending on, quote, so much the war on drugs, the law enforcement of it, which is bogus. Right. The the law enforcement is what controls the flow of drugs into and out of a community. There's no question about that. But my point is, take that money and then put it into rehab and those kind of things. But I go back and say it again. If you know, instead of suing the, the pharmaceuticals, then go in there and, and and say, look, you can only produce X amount. Blah blah mm-hmm. blah. I think heroin should be should be allowed as a painkiller. For terminally ill people. Yeah. And let's go back Ill. to the 60s. I saw an article on it where it showed these people in the United States that were in bed with all the tubes and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it showed this other picture of a bunch of old people sitting around playing cards. And it said the difference was they were, they were both of those groups were at their same point in life right before death from cancer. Mm-hmm. The ones in the beds and all that were in the United States. The ones playing cards were in England. Where heroin was uh, was, legal. was legal, and so they were taking heroin to, to you know to control their pain. But yet, this was back in the '60s. We wouldn't let them have anything; mm-hmm. just suffer. Yeah, um, real quick, uh, I'm going back and rechecking those numbers from the Louisiana Department of Health uh, website, the, their their own website. Um, they got 8.1 million federal dollars to uh, fight the. Um, opioid abuse epidemic. I just hope to God they're going to help some of these people get off of the opioids. Well, I think they need to do a lot more research, too. And and by the way, the, the, the lack of communication among doctors mm-hmm. who are prescribing I these agree. things, if you have one or two or three doctors, as some in my family have had, the shopping. and they're all, they're not, no, you're not even, not even that. You go to a doctor and you say, look, I have this pain. Okay, I'm mm-hmm. going to prescribe this. You go to another doctor and they ask you the mm-hmm. same thing. It may be a different kind of doctor, sure. but they prescribe also. And they, they think they're doing a good thing. Mm-hmm. I think there's just a tendency to do that and not enough shared information. Mm-hmm. Per patient. So the, the, the government has tied the hands of, of people who want to take uh, non-traditional medicine, uh, marijuana, uh, psilocybin, which we, we've seen that uh, the effects of psilocybin on PTSD. It's being new the drug. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's, no, no, that that's the active M- ingredient mushrooms. in mushrooms. LSD. And, and they're, and they're, and they're, you should go out and see what's in his company car trunk. <laughs> oh. You have mushrooms research, back there? It's a research project. No. Dude, Stafford and I are not allowed to ride anywhere. I have Mary Jane on board, and he's got the mushrooms. Good Lord. Well, we, we need to stop. We need, so we've scheduled marijuana uh, with the same uh, level as, as heroin, right? Which is which is absolutely terrible, and it's a travesty, and it's the reason that we've got all these people in jail today, right? We lock up people for joints. We lock up people for 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 bags of weed when when weed doesn't kill people, period. No, and in fact, we've seen opioid number opioid um, issues go down in in Colorado. We've seen crime go down. We've seen a, see a, that's the real point behind the suits, we, by the way. Yeah, I think so. I think that that the, that the that the company they're going to get marijuana the drugs and they're going to do those. Yeah, and look the, back to the original point. Jeff Landry and and John Bell Edwards need to find a way to work together. I'm not a big fan of Jeff Landry. 
I think that John Bell Edwards has done an okay job. Oh! But I can tell you, <laughs> this, oh this, this, this is something. This is such a big issue. They need to find a way to come together, period. All right, as we wrap up this uh, lively Winging It Wednesday segment, hey, tonight's game seven of the World Series. Any <laughs> predictions? Right. Everybody gets 30 seconds. <laughs> Who's going to win and why? I hope the Astros win. I think that, that they've got potentially one of the best teams in history. I can tell you I'm exhausted trying to watch these games. Yes. I hope that the next team that plays is in the same time zone so that we're not having every game at 7.20. I'd like to see a game start maybe <laughs> yes. 3 o'clock in the afternoon yes. so I can go to bed like a normal human being. <laughs> right? <laughs> go Strohs. So you know, right. Oh, and I'm following. a fan with the fence, so you can hammer me about that. I didn't go say Go Strohs a year ago. Right, so right. if you want to hammer you. me about it, me too. hammer me about it. Me too. Uh, Warren's been okay. keeping up with both of these teams for the entire season actually DVRs the games in case they're playing at the same time because he's so interested in everything that the Astros think. are doing. Yeah, I quit watching baseball back in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> the, second, the second time they went on strike. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, they want to go on strike, so Big I'm old on babies. strike. You know, I, no. I quit watching Just NFL kidding. back about 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I hope that, that the Astros win since they are our neighbors. And, yep. uh, you know, that I didn't even know who they were playing until yesterday. So you know, I could just really care less. But you know, I would like I would like to see them win. All right, Warren. I don't way, want to see the state of California win anything. He's a, <laughs> Warren, by the way, it, he's not just a playoff fan. He's a Game Six of the World Series fan. Now he's in his ears are up, and now he's oh, right. no, no, he's no, no, look, baseball, baseball is pennant. too slow. It's too boring. And, you know, I played it as a kid in Little League. Mm-hmm. I'd rather go watch Little League play, mm-hmm. you know, which mm-hmm. I don't do. But but let me say one thing. There was a, there was a guy in Tennessee that lived in Lafayette, Louisiana. He mm-hmm. was one of these who bought banks. Mm-hmm. He went around and buy a little country bank, buy another one, too, put them together, move on. And so when I moved down here, I ran into him up there one time, and mm-hmm. he said, Lafayette, Louisiana. He said, I never will forget how, how shocked I was to find out that the, the concession stands at Little League ball game sold beer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we do it right around here. Carol, you're 30. Uh, that's why LSU built that little flying, flying buttress over the stadium. <laughs> anyway, so it's not attached so they can sell beer. Uh, it's good thinking. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, Bernie, I just want world peace, you know? It's world <laughs> peace. <laughs> uh, actually, I mean, I'm kind of torn on this. We used to carry the Astros on Cape Hill years ago. Yes, I and, have a uh, very long history. Always, uh, you know, big supporters here of Astros. But, you know, my whole life, Brooklyn Dodgers, Tommy Lasorda. Yeah. I love my Brooklyn Dodgers, and they will always be Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> I don't care where they move. Mm-hmm. They can move anywhere. They will always be the Brooklyn Dodgers with Tommy Lasorda. All right, everyone. Thank y'all. That was so much fun. You know, it's funny how she won't let go of Brooklyn this mm-hmm. past weekend in Chicago when we were driving. We were on an architectural cruise. Ooh. Okay, looking at the skyscrapers, history and everything. And the guy points <laughs> up and he said, so this is the Willis Tower, pronounced in Chicago as the Sears Tower. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to give no that up. <laughs> no, exactly. no, absolutely not. That's what everybody needs. Mm-hmm. I used well, to have a baseball time, the card of building. Eddie Matthews yeah. of the Boston Braves. Wow. <laughs> guys, thanks as always. Carol Ross, yes. Warren Cottle, Stafford Barnett. It was great glorious. to see you guys each and every week. 757 coming up next on the show. Mm-hmm. Our teachers go. really facing declining mental health in the classroom. An expert joins us at 810. Stay with us on Acadiana's Morning News. I'm the expert. <laughs> yes. I live with a substitute, man.